So we are going to be reassembling one of these cylinders now and installing the seal kits. So after your rod is all cleaned up and all the other stuff is removed and cleaned up, at this stage you need to inspect the rod for any nicks, burrs, grooves, anything like that that may damage the o-ring and cause the seal to go bad right away. So just give the rod a once over, really close inspection, make sure all this work actually pays off. And pay attention on these cylinders too because a lot of times not all of the rod gets retracted into the barrel. On this cylinder there's about eight inches of rod that is sticking out and for our purposes is irrelevant if it's got any nicks or anything scratches on. So this one looks really good. <clears throat> You also need to inspect this area up by the piston because the, the bushing which contains the O-rings has to slide over that in order to get down to where it belongs. So that needs to be in, that area needs to be inspected as well. And if there is any uh, burrs or anything like that, you can take a non-aggressive wheel on a die grinder, or if you want to sit there with sandpaper by hand, um, just remove as much as, as least amount of material as possible. Smooth, smooth, smooth everything out there. There's a little burr right here that I'm just going to take a non-aggressive wheel on the grinder and try to remove here real quick. So first step, the first item that needs to get slid back on the rod is going to be your nut with the wiper seal. So we have our handy dandy Alice Chalmers seal kit and this is the wiper seal right here and might as well just give an overview of the components here that are included right away. So we have the V-packing set here, we have the two wear rings that hold the piston halves together, we have the small O-ring, the large O-ring, the backup ring for the small O-ring, and your wiper seal. So again the wiper seal with the lip up or the same direction as your grooves, that gets pressed in or tapped in a little bit. So I'm just going to go real lightly here with the hammer and get that tapped down into place. So there the wiper seal is now installed and as I said before everything should be cleaned up and inspected at this point. So I'm going to get a oil can I'm going to lubricate the rod a little bit here and also the inside of the nut with the wiper seal. So Slide the wiper seal down the rod inside the nut and then the, the little tapers on the ends there between the grooves should definitely help. Just go on very carefully and make sure the wiper seal does not get damaged. You notice I'm turning the nut as I'm going on. That's just kind of a way I do it to help it 
go on without getting damaged. Okay, so the wiper seal is done. The next component here is the steel bushing. So we have, again, outside groove that takes the, out, the larger O-ring and the inside groove which takes the backup ring with the small O-ring. So we can go ahead and start on the inside groove. And remember, the backup ring goes towards the flanged end or the outside end of the cylinder. So that should just slide slide down in there and hopefully the camera is getting it so I'm sliding it in the groove there and there it is it's in the groove now I'm going to take my pick and just push the back a ring to the side of the groove that it's supposed to be at just like that and then we can put our o-ring in there use the same method stick it in just kind of work it around and so it falls down into that groove there There we go. Excellent. It is now installed. Now we can put some more, little dab of oil on the inside there. You probably could have put some oil on it before you installed it. That may have may cause it to go in the groove a little easier, I suppose. So now we're back on the outside with the large O-ring and that just slips, slips right on there and then down right into the groove. So this is ready to go on and again we slide this on from the end here. Make sure you have enough lubrication so nothing gets torn or ripped. And again, I'm going to use a twisting motion just to help it. Similar to sliding a cylinder sleeve down on the block when you're rebuilding an engine. Helps to twist on the O-rings a little bit as it goes in. There. So you can see how I got that on. And if you, for whatever reason, see a small sliver of black O-ring on here, that means that your inside O-ring is cut, which is not good at all. So now we're going to slide this back down a little further. And now we're going to work on the piston and V-ring packings. So I'm going to take my two halves of my pistons right here. Remember, they must be matched to go on. So we'll take the first one with one of the wear rings. And the side that has the gap in there goes away. So the bottom one it would face away from the area where the V packings sit. Just like so. And then you can take the wear ring and very carefully slide it up and then work it around.
there. And that will hold the piston halves in place, just like that. And the next step would be the V-packings here. So I'm just going to take this tape off because that does not belong in the cylinder. That's just there for transport. So the next step here is to install the V-packings. And uh, as you may have noticed, they are directional. One side has a valley, the other side is pointed. So the pointed side should go down the entire length to the end of the rod. They should not, uh, they should not go on the opposite way. Again, the pointed side goes towards the end of the rod the long way. So we can just assemble those on one at a time if necessary. Just like that. Okay. Now we need to install the second piston. If you will notice, the V packings stick up a little bit from the groove for the next piston. That is supposed to happen that way, so that when the piston is in, the second piston is installed, the V packings will expand a little bit and it just seals better. That's by design. So now we will take our second piston here and remember which direction they, it goes on. This is probably the most tricky part here of assembling these cylinders. Can the camera guy zoom out a little bit? So I have this little bushing here that I have found works very well. What you need to do is just add pressure to the tops of these piston halves so they will slide in the groove. So what I'm going to do is hold them with one hand and then I'm going to try tapping with the hammer to compress the V packings so that the piston halves slide in the groove. And as you can see, they did just what I expected them to do. They were compressed a little bit, allowing the piston halves to slide in. So on this step here, you just want to make sure that there's no chunks of, of metal or of v-packing that might be compressed in there and then the other side this one is almost together already we, we do want to make sure that nothing got jammed in there and that's the way it looks nothing got caught in there so that can go all the way together and then we can slide our last wear ring back on there. Just like that. And then our rod is complete and ready to be reassembled once again.